We're now leaving Oakwood Station, the penultimate station on the northern part of the Piccadilly line. We'll now pass the Cockfosters train maintenance depot. Here's the junction for it, or the east junction. And the Cockfosters trains will weave around the outskirts of the depot and through the countryside. Welcome to the Piccadilly Line's northernmost terminus of Cockfosters. And you got the maintenance depot located to the east of the station that way. And the station has three terminal roads. This one, this one, which doesn't have Spanish solution boarding. And this one here. And you got a massive concrete train shed. Very similar to the one at Uxbridge. 50 kilometers away by rail on the Piccadilly Line or 25 kilometers in a direct distance but the only like real difference here is that Uxbridge has a shopping parade um, after the gate mine whereas this one has a passometer and a, and a circulation area and you got a train pulling in And also another difference is that the middle terminal road is actually um, doesn't go as much further because um, there's like a another drab pot where like 10 years ago there used to be flowers and gnomes planted in it but now just a stupid drab grey thing. TFL news! Sly dogs here. Anyways. Almost similar to Upsbridge. Gnomes planted in it, but now just a stupid drab grey thing. Tearful news! Anyways. Almost similar to Upsbridge. Now, the station's main gem is the iconic train shed designed by Charles Holden. Extremely similar to the one in Uxbridge. Speaking of Uxbridge, we've got a Piccadilly Line train leaving for Uxbridge for its 90 minute, 50 kilometer journey.
it should arrive by about 4.30 or something at Uxbridge, which is such a stupendous long journey. And the train now weaves between the depot, which is there, with the junctions located immediately after the station, and the countryside. And actually the station is actually on the same latitude as Watford is, a few miles to the west that way, but it doesn't really have the same latitude as Watford Junction. And anyway, back to the train shed. The middle road actually extends a little bit deeper into the train shed but at Uxbridge, but here at Cockfosters, it doesn't extend as much further as it is. Um, and also, I'll show you why that is later. And also, Uxbridge is located in a massive concrete trench. Here, Cockfosters is on ground level, but positioned on level track. And the reason why this station and Uxbridge have the same or similar train sheds is that they have to represent an end-to-end -end point of the whole line. What the hell? Why is there a Great Northern announcement? at a tube station. I don't, I don't get why they do this at these tube stations for a national rail announcement. But anywho, we got a another Piccadilly line says pulling in. Yeah, you see, you don't have Spanish solution boarding, so you, you have this OPO thing, which is similar to Uxbridge. And we got the other train leaving for Heathrow Airport. Oh, it's an empty train not in service. And the station has four platforms with one of them not being in use because of the Spanish Solution OPO situation. It's like there's really only three platforms here technically. And because it's a terminus you need to be careful about which platform the next train would leave from.
And actually, Cockfosters was meant to be known as Trent Park, but they decided to stick on this silly name for some reason. Um, and this name was actually assembled um, as far back as 1524, named after a family or something. A district on the wiki page to find out. On this poster, you got the Piccadilly Line journey times, and notice the times increase. Eh? It takes like half an hour to get into central London, 87 minutes to Terminal 5, and get this 94 minutes to Uxbridge. Oh my god. Now head into the ticket hall of Cockfoss's station and into the train shed again. And you got these waiting rooms inside of these portal frames, but no one would ever really use them unless if you needed a rest. Not a nice wooden benches and then put the large buffer stop and this pot here which was originally used to plant flowers and gnomes in they're now gone sadly got the screens up here that's my nice clock. And it looks rather different to Uxbridge, past the gate line. And you've got the passenger meter in the middle, and you've got one of the brand new lifts here. I saw back in 2020, I think, but who we'll used them? It is similar to the one at Mill Hill East. Street level. And it takes you to the car park. And we also got the courtesy bench here um, to allow for passengers to wait for the lift to arrive if it's delayed. Clever addition. You got the slip road here from the main road into the station car park. Now this car park is massive. I mean, obviously, you would need to pay for this. And like every other station which has a car park. And this car park fills quite frequently by many of the suburban commuters who live here. And let me let me just show you something over right here. Here at Cockfoss, this is actually six entrances. Um, you got like this one here, this linked up one, which is by the car park. But first let me show you this. Uh, it's a plaque for another London walkway known as the London Loop. 150 miles circular walk around Greater London, which is promoted in 24 sections. 
And this one actually promotes section 17, which is cockfosses to Enfield Lock. And it says, and I quote, this walk is alive with history. The route leads through the grounds of Trent House, where 20th century royalty were entertained, and enemy airmen from World War II were interrogated. And then you've got a little bit more information here. Before we read, pause and resume it. We've got some conditions here. Etc. Oh my god, you've got this uh, narrow entrance here. So, all together, the entrance of the lift on this side and this narrow entrance here make up one whole entrance in my opinion. Although some people may consider it as two, which would make this station having seven entrances. We a classic tube rumble with the diamonds in between the letters. And Arsenal breaks that design rule. And you got this entrance, which may seem like a casual entrance, but the difference is that you have entrances three and entrances four here. Yeah. And then you've got a subway entrance there, which goes underneath the main road. You have entrance 5 and 6, but the unlock um, 7th, or technically 6th one, is over here in a second car park. And it's this one to the to the west of the station, but no one would ever really use this uh, as it's like uh, gated off for most of the time. And you've got the small bus station in the middle, and the road just heads up into the rural countryside. And you've got the high street with the row of shops. Uh, and this is a really really small high street and it's also the Piccadilly line is northern terminus is in such a high rural area and you've got another bus drop off bay here a waiting room but um, this is an exit area which are marked by like a stop and arrow sticker and of this sign, Subway to Trains. And with these stairs, you go through this underpass and into the ticket hall, which forms part of the London Loop. You got the rather small Charles Holden Station building from street level. And before Cockfuss, this was actually meant to look very, very different if you look on the wiki page. But I prefer this one over the um, original one that was going to be planned. We've got Bus Route 384 for Cockfuss Station, and it stops at Bus Stop A. Even though it doesn't say 384, on the sign for some reason. Alright, now this is the actual main entrance into Cockfosters. And you've got two benches here where you can wait for some time. And these are the steps that take you down into the station. And this is on the eastern side of the road. The other one was on the west. Yeah, and it is a quiet equivalent of Uxbridge. And you've got a cafe and also um, toilets here for some reason. Yeah, and the labyrinth is located in the passageway. And it is number... 218 out of 217.
So there you can see the trains board, which is in a like a light box style, and that has been replaced by a new dot matrix indicator. And we also have a nice clock located in the center of the building. For some reason, you got this accessible area um, around the left of the station with a garden. Um, I'm not going to go to that area though. But here you got platforms four, then three, and then platform two, and then platform one. Jeez, that shouting, that stuff scared the crap out of me. But anyways. We got a train here on the Piccadilly line platform. And here you got another train coming in, number one six four. Yeah, and you notice the doors don't open on this side because you, that, there's that OPO thing that I mentioned earlier. And here is these boring waiting rooms. And, ugh, the paint is peeling. The seats are covered in rust. Ugh, it's horrible here. But everything else is wonderful, especially these circular light bulbs it is a very quaint and picturesque station i recommend for all of you old and new to check this station out and we'll board this train and it will take us home and this these are the ancient 1973 stock trains and are now 50 years old now and it will be replaced by the wonderful new tube for london trains the 2024 stock man i'm looking forward to those and the, the trains are fine for the most part especially the bomb and maquette and also i like the line maps here and apart from that the train isn't really special mm. It was only built for the Heathrow extension. It was built by Metro Camel. The line map, and then after Acton Town, one splits into two long branches one to Heathrow Airport, and the other up to the small village or metropolitan centre town of Uxbridge and this train is the first one to leave Cockfosters and will leave for Heathrow Airport and it will leave in a few minutes and the first connection is actually Oh, for Rainers Lane, okay. Um, it's for Bose Park, Bounds Green. That's the first connection. And now, we'll leave it. These Rainers Lane Oxbridge trains from Carfosters take such a circuitous route. I don't recommend traveling on these services. For Oxbridge, for Carfosters, Please change at King's Cross and take the match instead. That's a better route. Yeah, we got the demo on the other side here. But now I'll show you the countryside. This part of the line goes along the edge of it, high in the hills. some evidence of deforestation here which is all prone to climate change which I get paranoid of
just on the side of the depot. Now we're approaching to the station, Opal, where I actually came for the 1938 tube stop rail tour.